The MacBook Pro 2019 with Intel chip versus the MacBook Pro 14 inch 2021 with M1 Pro chip. How do these two computers compare for Ableton Live music production? Let's talk about it. How's it going everybody? It is Ben Aqua. Thank you so much for joining me. These two machines are awesome. Even this 2019 MacBook Pro with eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 storage. This is still actually holding up pretty well in 2021. However, it does have the Intel chip and the screen is 13 inches versus the 14 inches on the newer MacBook Pro. So this is not a fair comparison at all, but it's just more just kind of curiosity because this 14 inch MacBook Pro has the M1 Pro chip. This has a 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, one terabyte of storage. This is the 2499 model from Apple. So it's definitely a lot more expensive. And by the way, please smash the like button below and subscribe because I'm going to be making even more content with this spicy 14 inch MacBook Pro. So what I have here is the same song loaded up on both of these machines. This is a song called Love is Surrender, and it's actually a cover by the Carpenters. So I made kind of like a synth pop version of it. It's hyper, it sounds like Weird Al, it's completely ridiculous. <laughs> But yeah, check out my music on Spotify and Apple Music by searching for Ben Aqua. I highly appreciate all of your streams and all of your love. And this song, by the way, has 20 tracks going on at the same time. So there's a bunch of like software synthesizers. There's some live vocals. There's some drum machine action going on. And on each one of these channels, there's like a ton of effects. So in preferences in Ableton Live, to make things fair, I have both of these computers set to 48,000 hertz in and out sample rate and a buffer size of 256 samples. So let's see what's happening with CPU usage. We have an average of about 29 to 38 to kind of fluctuates, but it seems like it's hovering around 35% on average, maybe 33 to 35. So it kind of depends on how many plugins and stuff we have going on in the song, but this 13 inch MacBook Pro from 2019 is in the range of like 30 to 35. Let's see what's happening on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So so it looks like the average CPU usage on this one, it's about 25 to 28. Sometimes it dips over 30% average CPU usage. So we're definitely getting better CPU on this M1 Pro machine. And I should also mention that the latest version of Ableton Live has been installed on both of these machines. And this is not the beta version that actually is optimized for M1 because I wanted this to be a fair comparison, but also because I've tried the Ableton Live 11.1 beta on the MacBook Pro 14 inch and it was super unstable. It got rid of a bunch of my VSTs. Like it was just a hot mess. And there was basically basically no noticeable difference when it came to CPU usage on the stable like not beta version versus the M1 optimized version. So I'm actually kind of shocked and surprised that this 13 inch is doing not that bad compared to the M1 Pro on the right. Like this is a two year old machine. It has that Intel chip and the fans definitely go off on this machine. I'm actually surprised that they haven't gone off yet because when the fans go off on this MacBook Pro, which they do a lot, I swear like I'll just look at the computer and it sounds like a plane is taking off but on the 14 inch new MacBook Pro I've only heard the fan noise go off once on this machine and when it went off it wasn't like this insanely aggressive fan noise it was actually quite subtle so yeah CPU difference on the 2019 versus the 14 inch it seems like you're going to be getting about 10% better CPU usage on the MacBook Pro from 2021 so is the CPU performance astronomically better on the newer MacBook Pro I wouldn't say astronomically but again this app isn't optimized for M1 so it's really not taking taking advantage of the full capacity, the full power of that M1 Pro chip. So now for the moment of truth, let's export the same file on both of these machines using the same export settings. So here we have a sample rate of 48,000 hertz. We're going to encode PCM wave at 24 bits with no dither. And this song, by the way, is only about a minute and 47 seconds. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, so we're at 
13 seconds in and it looks like the MacBook Pro 14 inch is at 47%. It is going crazy. And the 13 inch MacBook Pro 43%. And we're at 28 seconds, 30 seconds. It looks like the MacBook Pro 14 inch is actually about to be done in about 38 seconds. And then we have the MacBook Pro from 2019 still going. We're at 48 seconds, 49 seconds. It looks like it's about to be done in about 50 seconds. So we had a much faster render time on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. This isn't very surprising, of course, because this processor is so much faster. We have a lot more cores working towards exporting your files on this monster machine. So in other videos, I've said a similar thing where it really depends on like what your needs are. Like, do you need an insanely fast render speed? Do you have like clients that are waiting for files yesterday kind of thing and you need to export a file like super fast? In that case, I would definitely suggest if you have the budget, of course, getting this beefier MacBook Pro. If you're on more of a budget, by all means, I would definitely recommend getting this MacBook Pro from 2019. Just remember that you're getting an Intel chip in this one, so it's not going to be nearly as fast or efficient when it comes to music production. We're still getting much better CPU performance by about 10% on this M1 Pro machine on the right. And besides just kind of playing through the song, like where that can actually come in handy is if you're doing a live performance using Ableton Live. You know, the more RAM you have, the more CPU cores you have, the better. Another huge difference between these two machines is the built-in speakers is dramatically better on this 14-inch MacBook Pro. So let's do a speaker test between the two. Here's the 14-inch MacBook Pro. Pro. So in comparison, let's check out the 13 inch MacBook Pro 2019 speakers. So as you can probably hear, there's a lot more bass coming out of the speakers on the newer MacBook Pro 14 inch, where the 13 inch speakers were decent, but they just sound a lot more tinny, like there's absolutely no bass coming out of this machine. It's a lot higher on the trebles and the mids, so vocals actually sound decent on this one, but you just get a much fuller sound on this 14 inch MacBook Pro's internal speakers. So some of you may be asking yourselves, if you have the 2019 MacBook Pro with Intel chip, should you upgrade? to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And for me, the answer is a no brainer. I definitely think you should. However, again, this is $2,000, but what you get for $2,000 is actually kind of insane because as you can see, this is a 14 inch display on the 2021 MacBook Pro versus a 13 inch. The bezels are a lot smaller on the sides of the machine. And this 14 inch screen is also the newest XDR display from Apple. It's absolutely gorgeous. Videos, HDR content look absolutely insane. There is that ridiculous notch on this 14 inch and the 16 inch 2021 MacBook Pros. While I would rather it not be there, it's kind of not that big of a deal to me because you can see in Ableton Live, for example, the menu system doesn't come anywhere close to hitting that notch. And you can see how much more real estate we have on the 14 inch where you can see a lot more of the timeline over here and it just feels more spread out when it comes to adding effects and stuff. The 14 inch MacBook Pro also has an upgraded FaceTime camera hidden underneath that awful notch. And it's just faster overall, like just doing normal stuff, like checking your email, checking social media and stuff. It's so much faster on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And I also wanted to mention that this 14 inch display has ProMotion, which goes up to 120 Hertz refresh rate. So when you're just scrolling around, you can see the cursor just looks a lot more fluid. And when you're scrolling around websites and stuff like the scrolling and just overall feel of this computer is just absolutely bonkers, bananas fast. But the scrolling and overall experience on this 13 inch MacBook Pro is still really awesome considering this is a two year old machine like this screen is actually quite fluid it's really fast when it comes to you know zooming in and out it's by no means a slow machine you can do so many things that you can also do on this 14 inch machine it's just not going to be quite as fast when it comes to opening apps and just like the general you know just experience of mac os another huge difference between these two machines is on the 2019 macbook pro we only have two thunderbolt usb-c ports on the left side and then on the right side there's a headphone jack and that is it in terms of 
ports. But in comparison, the 2021 MacBook Pro has a MagSafe charger. It has three Thunderbolt USB-C ports, two on the left here, one on the other side of the computer, and then this amazing headphone jack, which sounds really, really good and supports high impedance headphones. And then on the right side of the 2021, we have an HDMI port, which is super handy for connecting to an external monitor or display. And then here's your third Thunderbolt USB-C port. And then we also have the SD card reader. And another thing to think about is size and weight differences, because you can see how much thinner this 13 inch MacBook Pro is versus the 14 inch, not by a whole lot, but it definitely feels like a smaller computer. You know, it's definitely lighter. This 14 inch MacBook Pro is amazing, but it is kind of chunky. It is a little bit thick, but when holding them, throwing them in a backpack and stuff like that, it really doesn't feel that much more thick or that much more heavy than this 13 inch MacBook Pro, but the 13 inch is definitely more portable. It's definitely more lightweight. Another huge difference between these two machines is the keyboard is the updated keyboard on this MacBook Pro 14 inch feels really nice to type on. I actually just did a typing test. Be sure to check out my other 14 inch MacBook Pro videos below. But yeah, this keyboard is just a dream to type on. It just sounds beautiful. It feels really thick and firm and juicy just the way we all like it. And we have really easily accessible top row keys like the function keys, all of your media controls and stuff have physical keys on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Where on the 13 inch MacBook Pro, we have a touch bar where you can access all of your media controls and stuff up here. And it's kind of a personal preference like some people really absolutely disdain this touch bar i've actually found this touch bar to be pretty useful for certain things when i'm testing out a mastered song versus like something in apple music it's really nice to have like touch controls in apple music down here where i can play pause and scrub through the track really easily anyway i hope this video was helpful for you if it was please smash the like button and subscribe below and also please follow me on twitter at b3naqua because i'm posting all kinds of like fun behind the scenes stuff. And since you made it all the way to the end of the video, I commend you. You are extremely patient, probably more patient than I am. And I thank you for watching the entire video. And I would like to personally invite you to my Discord channel, which I will link below. That's where we're talking about Apple stuff and all kinds of things. And yeah, that's it for this video. Leave your questions and comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.